Aspiration Gala. Isn't it wonderful? It really is. I've worked so hard for this moment. Do not ruin it for me. We'll be on our best behavior. As I stared at the opulence of this Aspiration Gala extravaganza, my eye was caught by a movement on a walkway. These had to be the people that I was looking for, the people who would lead me to Milo. I had to find a way to get up to that walkway and find out where they were going. Curb that human instinct, Foster. This is no time for snacks. It looked pretty tasty, but I was at the party to find answers, not snacks. ticket for the Aspiration Gala. Lovely to welcome you. But you know this is the VIP section? Of course. You see, I'm, um, I'm a friend of the Laureate, Reginald Arthur Schnipple. Reggie and I go way back, you know. Yes, I'm sure you do. And, um, your name would be... Madame Grande. Oh, appear to have a Madame Grande. What? Oh, Grande. Songbird Grande. Songbird Grande, there it is. Enjoy the party, Madame Grande. Oh, I intend to, darling. You know what, Foster? Something funny about that girl. Hey, Raquel. Good to see you. Sir, and you are... Graham Grundy, remember? Have we met before, sir? It was odd. She really didn't recognize me. Well, sure, at the apartments. You nearly fell? No, uh, I'd definitely remember something like that, don't you think? Anyway, I, I see you've got your ticket, but... But? This is a general entry ticket, not a VIP ticket. I'm afraid that you don't have access to this area. I'm so sorry. Enjoy the rest of the gala. I had no need to enter the VIP section. I was here for the secret meeting. What can I do for you? Did you enjoy the Reflection Center? How do you know I went to Reflections? I saw you taken there by Arana. Arana? My friend, the well-being officer. Yes, that's her. Well, it was as good as ever. Euphoric, even. What exactly goes... What? You've never been? Never. Doesn't seem like my sort of thing. you got to do it. It's an unforgettable experience. And what exactly is the experience? Oh, an overwhelming sense of well-being. Just supreme happiness. A new perspective. Oh, it's so very therapeutic. That sounds amazing. We ought to check it out. We don't have time for that, Joey. What are you doing here? I'm working. This is my job. Had any trouble? It's hardly a tough crowd. So far, the only person who's tried to enter this section without a VIP ticket is you. You'll always be a VIP to me, Foster. You sure you don't remember me? Where would I know you from? You were at my apartment. You called me a meatbag and asked me my favorite color. 
You'd think I'd remember that. You must be mistaking me for someone else. Catch you later. Enjoy the party. I'm very sorry, Mentor Alonzo. I don't know what happened. It won't do, Astrid. Won't do at all. This is the Aspiration Gala, after all. Yes, sir. Of course. And you said you believe the firework projector was tampered with? I'm not entirely sure, but it was working perfectly during the rehearsals. Regardless, I trust that the issue really is now resolved, and that you'll be keeping a closer eye on things from now on. Oh, yes, sir. And you won't have to keep leaving your station unsupervised? Absolutely not. You can count on me. Now, back to work, hmm? Mr. Grundy, what a pleasant surprise. Of course, Aspiration Day always does deliver surprises. It's all about who you know, isn't it? Indeed. I'd be very interested to find out more about who exactly you know. Is Officer Arana coming tonight? Why do you ask? Are you in need of well-being support? He loves her. No, no, I just assumed she'd be here. Well, as a matter of fact, she was here a moment ago. You must have just missed her. Where did she go? I have no idea. A busy little bee, that one. So, what are you doing here, Alonzo? I'm here to supervise everyone's well-being. Like Officer Arana? Officer Arana was in charge of the preparations. I'm here to make sure the event itself runs smoothly. Sounds like a tough gig. It won't be. Things never go wrong in Union City. Enjoying the party? The Aspiration Gala never fails to put a smile on my face. And I look forward to Reginald's poetic display with undiluted pleasure. His past efforts have always been so amusing. I'll see you around. Do keep a smile on your face, Mr. Grundy. anybody just to get your own way, won't you, Foster? You think a 
if I was running a city, I'd install some decent elevator music, huh? This had to be where the shadowy figure had come from. All right, we're going through the vent. Age before beauty. If you say so. Oh, man. Forgot how old this show was. Okay, move. Can't say I'm not a droid of my word. Thank you, Joey. It looked like Tarquin and Reginald were about to perform. The excitement was bearable. After all the effort I'd put in to get that poem, I had to see it performed live. People of Union City! Is everyone feeling aspirational today? I cannot hear you! But first, once again it is I, Poet Laureate Reginald Arthur Schnipple, Esquire, to titillate your taste buds and waggle your wits. I know you all love a giggle and a guffaw, and making you giggle is one of my favorite things. So this year, I thought it would be hilarious to see what happens if I asked a droid to write a poem all on his own. So, without further ado, I'd like to bring up a very special guest. My very own Fidelis II domestic savant, Tarquin! Ah, oh, this should be good, folks. <laughs> and don't worry. However this goes, I'll be bringing up the rear with a cracker of my own. Go on, Tarquin! Show these good people what you've got. <clears throat> I ventured one day to my favorite cafe to partake in a wonderful scene. For I love Union City, the colors so pretty. I'm sure all here know what I mean. With spankles in hand, I sat next to a man, his grin unmistakably forced. I asked him his woe, and he said, oh, you know, just the typical small things, of course. My flat isn't right. My pants are too tight. My link sometimes loses connection. My droid's a bit worn and my left sock is torn. And I'm long overdue for reflection. But sir, I then said, there's a roof overhead. Pants are tight cause there's food in your tummy. Sock is torn, take it off. Go barefoot for a laugh. You see glum where I only see funny. You live in a place that caters all tastes. A bottomless sheer cornucopia. Edible, drinkable, it's rather unthinkable to groan when you live in utopia. So next time your grin feels a little bit grim and your flat feels a little bit pat, Change that mood if you like, or if not, take a hike, cause there's plenty of room in the gap. Ha <laughs> ha Wow! Tarquin, 
That was incredibly inspired. Thank you, thank you. One cannot wait to hear your poem, sir. Uh, yes, well, uh, perhaps a five minute break first. Uh... I always say, judge your society on its firework parties. I don't know why I say it, just making conversation. Jeez, Foster. I expected you to be in better shape. Shut up, Joey, and keep an eye out. That vehicle. It's the same as the one that stole Milo. Guess that means we're in the right place. Foster, look out! Uh, Arana? You! Arana, stop! Yeah, Arana, stop! I'm not who you think I am. I know you're not Graham Grunty. You've been lying to me since the moment we met. What the hell have you done with the real Graham? And who the hell are you? My real name is... Robert! Danielle Piermont? The lady from the museum? What on earth is a nice boy like you doing in a back alley like this? Arana, dear, please! You can stop! But his mother and I were at school together. You can trust him, I promise. Can someone please explain what the hell is going on? Graham Grundy is dead. You killed him for his ID? Robert! Oh, dude. That's harsh. No. I found Graham's body outside the gates. He'd been dead for days. I was looking for a child who was kidnapped in one of those vehicles. I needed a way into the city. Graham's ID was the answer. The poor boy. I told him not to try anything stupid. This is all my fault. Oh, Rana, dear, don't be hard on yourself. Graham knew what he was doing. My name is Robert Foster. I've come from the Gap. A few days ago, one of those vehicles attacked my village. The androids were armed. We couldn't stop them. They took my friend, Milo. He's just a kid. This is just awful. So you were both friends with Graham? I didn't think he had any friends. Friends, allies, whatever you want to call it. Graham was working at the land train entrance when he saw one of these things coming into the city. These things? You mean the stalkers? I thought they were called creepers. We call them walkers. Whatever they're called. Here comes another one. girl in the stalker. I recognized her. Ember. Graham was right. Those things are carrying children. Whatever they're doing to them. It's inside that building. Then that's where I'll find Milo. Now then, I must get back to the gala. I fear my absence from the festivities may already be apparent. You two, find out where they're taking those children. Two? You mean three, don't you? That's my plan. 
Lovely to see you again, Robert. You too, Miss Piermont. Oh, and Arana? Yes? Trust him. He's from good stock. That elevator transported the Stalker into the building. We need to find a way to get it working. What if another one of those big beasts shows up? Okay, I'll keep watch. Reckon you and your sidekick can figure it out. Huh. We got this far. She was talking to me, Rob. Can you see a button anywhere? I don't think this place was designed for visitors. Foster, I have auto-link to the system. Perhaps... Come on, there's no way... You were saying... Hey, Arana, we found a way...